G'day, how are you? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel where I like to teach beginners how to paint in acrylic. Uh, I'm gonna do a portrait layout of my canvas today. Something nice and tall, something quite simple on my comeback. And it's just gonna be a horizon line a bit under halfway. And it's gonna be something a beginner can achieve and I know you can do it. So get on over here and let's get right into it, all right? So I've got my sky up here and I've got some water here. You're gonna have some beautiful reflections and some life like uh, some life subjects in the middle as well. So we'll start off with a beautiful simple sky with some lovely sweeping clouds. Now, what I've got on the palette there is some craft paint to be exact. It's just um, student craft paint. It's, I call it craft paint because it's soft and crafty like the stuff you use in schools. But it's just a soft acrylic paint, a lot softer than comes out of the tube. And I want a little bit of retarder, not too much. Uh, why? Because that's going to keep that wet and give me the ability to blend my skies the way the oil artists do. So what I'll do is I'll just simply mix that up on the palette there with my putter on a brush. Now this putter on a brush does some magic stuff as well. Now just for the sky area, I just want to crisscross this and push it right into the canvas, get it all over. I'm using this putter on a brush. See how the, there's no paint there, but it's all there. Don't go like that and try and hope for the best. You've got to really put it on, push it down with the whole hairs of the brush, pick up some more and get it right over your subject there. Whatever you're painting, whether it's a door, a canvas or a, whatever, furniture. Okay, I've done that. Now what I'm going to do is go to the tip of me putter on a brush and then I'm just going to stroke it like a gentleman. Look at that beautiful prepared area to do a lovely sky. Whether you want a warm sky, orangey, yellowy, red colours or a cool sky, blues and greys. Okay. Now on the palette down here, I've got some red gold. If you don't have red gold, just find a deep orange or an Australian sienna, and I've got cerulean blue. So I wanna do the horizon line area, a bit of like a setting of the day, and some blue up in the top. So I'll get some of this on me, put it on a brush, and I pretty much just want this at the bottom. So I put it right on, right on, push it up into that white, push it up, push it up, let it fade away to nothing. Go to the tip of the brush now and I'm stroking it into there like a pure gentleman. And I'll tell you what else you can do to this at this stage. You've got that value there. You might think, oh, let's put a bit of charisma in it. I'm just picking up a little bit more and you can just do something like this. A few bands, whatever you wanna do, just like that. Okay, then go again. If you like them, leave them there. If you don't, just blend it smooth. This is just something different you can do. Look at that. Now what I need to do is wash this brush so as I can pick up the blue and put inside it. Okay, that's nice and clean. Now I'm just gonna pick up the blue. I'm gonna start at the top and it can come lighter as we get to that orangey color. So we'll start at the top of the painting, get it right on there. Push it onto the canvas like I say. Okay, pick up some more. That's That retarded white paint I put on is still nice and wet. But I've got to hurry. I've got my aircon on in here and it might dry it, so I've got to sort of hurry. Now I'm going to merge those two together. Just use the tip of the brush. Come and crisscross them like so. Get down into that orange. Don't bring any blue into it. And then use the tip of the brush and I'm stroking it left and right. Left and right. So there's no ugly scratchy brush strokes in the painting. Then I'll come down over the orange and clean that up a little bit. See, there's nothing on the very tip of that brush. Okay, what we need for the next procedure is your white paint. Now I've got some titanium white here. Now don't go picking up this craft paint you might have used. That's a soft body stuff. This one's more thicker textured, okay? And it's got more pigment in it. I like to use this as the painting's color. I've used that just as a medium to condition the canvas the way I wa wanted it, as such as a primer. Now, and I, I like to use a fan brush for my clouds. And I might have some high cirrus there and some hazy stuff, just sort of blocking out where the orange meets the blue. So what I'll do, I'll just kind of fumble along and create some kind of thing like this. Now my brush is getting quite dirty now. That's when your brush is saying, hey painter, 
stop what you're doing, pick up a blending brush and softly blend this into a haze. See, I'm, I'm moving around. Also have a rag so you can constantly wipe it because you're picking up, see on the tip of that brush, the paint, I've wiped it off, but, and you can control what you're blending. Now I'm gonna bring that down. I wanna smoothen it. Now I've got some sort of orangey whites here in the blending brush. I wanna be careful not to put too much of that up. Look at that, see? I don't wanna be putting too much of that up into the blue. So now we'll start on the blue bit. And this is just hazing the colors together, the two sky colors together, just like that. And if you like what's happening, don't over blend it. If you think you're happy with that look, bloody leave it, eh, I say. It's the best thing you can do. You're creating art. There we go. And I want a little bit more on the other side. Okay, I'll finish adding that on there. I've cleaned my brush, my fan brush, and I've got some more white, and I want to add a couple of cirrus clouds. So something a bit brighter whiter than what we just put on there. So I'll probably have something sneaking through here, just like this. Watch what I do. Boom. There's my blending brush. And then you want to blend that down but leaving it just a bit wider brighter than what's underneath it wipe your brush look what's on it wipe your brush and create lovely clouds you need to practice clouds to get some really good ones it took me years to get where i am today okay and we'll add a bit more something mainly here so i want something a bit main in the middle here now just something whispery one there, and a bit of a tail up here. That'll do. Right, see these blending brushes? Just pull them back together like that. And message me on Facebook if you want these brushes. If you want to blend the way I do, grab yourself some of them. You get one of these, this is a two inch that I'm using, and you also get a one and a half inch. And this is a 16 by 12 inch canvas. You can see. How easy they are to do a small painting. Okay, done. Now what I want to do is paint the lower half, which is the water. So we'll go back to this craft paint that we got here. Now that doesn't, it's already got some retarder left in it from the sky, but if you're starting from scratch, I'm not that fussed about putting any retarder, if anything, in the water primer because I need a window open to blend a beautiful sky like that. But in the water, you can get away with doing it real quick. Now I'm gonna make this water real simple. If you've got some good ways of painting water, do it your way. I'll just get this up to about that color there. We're gonna have a mid-ground island or something in there, so that's okay. So we've pretty much got that. Now I'm stroking it like a gentleman, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Get rid of that hard line there. Okay. Now just wipe your brush, pick up some of your red gold that you had. Now what I did earlier on off camera, you didn't see me, but I squirted some water on there just to keep it usable a bit longer. And from about here, we wanna get our sky color in the water like that, all the way across. Don't go like this and over here and edge it on a little bit like that. Have some courage and just go right across it in big full strokes like this, okay? Look at that. Pick up some more, put it on, and then condition it into the canvas by stroking it left and right. There we go. Now we're gonna wipe that brush, pick up the cerulean blue, and start at the bottom and creep this up to the orange. Now this might go a little bit green if you've got some orange mixed with your brush, but it doesn't matter because water has green in it. Okay, there we go. Now, I would have liked that orange to have come down to the blue more than what it is. So what I'm gonna do, I'll quickly wipe the brush and bring some orange down here. There we go. Let's push that back. Now just finish it off by stroking it. And there we go, we've got our water. The water's still pliable if you want to put any beautiful markings in there. And what I mean by that, I'll just leave your painting like that if you want, but I'm just gonna give you an example. So where's a clean finger, I'll just use this one here. 
I'm just going to do this for the sake of the tutorial. Get a bit of white. Uh, where are we? Say about here. Let's put some kind of element in the sky. Now, I haven't dried the sky. Okay. And then we'll put that in the water. Straight line like that. Boom, 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 boom. Nothing more, nothing less. I'll wipe my finger. Now, before I fix the sky up, I'll just grab a brush. The sky's still wet, so I'm just going to grab a brush and teasingly merge that out so it's got a beautiful soft edge there and it's just a hint of the sun or a moon stuck behind some misty clouds. Whatever element you want that to be, it can be it. Okay, there we go. And um, this thing here we can try and, we'll start at the bottom just to stroke it right across and that's it. Leave it alone, don't touch it anymore. I've dried the horizon line area here because I'm going to put this mid-ground in there and I'm going to use a filbert brush, just a small size filbert, medium flat filbert. And down here I've got some dark green, perylene green actually. It looks quite black but it's beautiful for blocking in your greens. One of my beautiful subscribers sent me this tube, it's a Winsor Newton. Uh, professional acrylic artist, but there's the name there, Perylene Green, if you can read that. And I want to come across the painting. There's my horizon line there, okay? So I want to come across the painting. Now, I like to do these in umbrella shapes, get some up, get some air in between them, and just make a beautiful canopy of trees out there on the horizon like this. And then what I'll do when I've, let's say there, See how the filbert brush makes beautiful tree canopies? Then what I, what I like to do is once I've got the footprint of it there, I'll start, leave some air in there, about there, and then I'll start blocking it in from about there, okay? Just like that. So you can see what I've done. I haven't got a hard line there of blocking in. You've got to be artistic when you do things. And what else you can do is say like your water part, let's hope I've dried it enough. I'll get this on there like so, there we go. Come under your water line. Let's get that in there first. And then I want to grab the same brush, get the height roughly, same as the top, bit there, bit there like so okay and then just just lightly scratch it but keep these scratches in a very straight up and down motion and do it in a way see how I'm getting a bit of a dark line underneath the scratching you want to put it on the scratching bit and pull it down so it's all happening at the one time but I'm just demonstrating here in this video now what I'm going to do, I've zoomed in a bit, I'll just show you how I showed you how to pull that first bit of reflection into the water. I'm going to show you another way so you don't get that hard line within it, okay? So I'll get this all blocked in. Okay, down to the water line there, there we go. Then you can do it this way as well, so you can pretty much See this shape here? I'm putting that in the water straight away and then pull it. Come down a bit lower, pull it. A bit lower, pull it. Then you can come back and block this in. That way you're not going to get that little hard edge that you don't want happening coming there, okay? So where are we? We're coming down a bit more. Pull it. Careful though, you don't want big, thick pull down blobs. You want it to be very scratchy like that. There we go, and then when you block that in, brings it home. Now I've got some of the green and I mixed it in the rest of this deep orange. And now I'm adding a little bit of white to it, but I don't want to mute it too much. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. That's too bright, so I'll grab some more of this green. And once, if you've done any brush mixing, it might always pay, your brush is full of globs and blobs and goobly gloops, it might pay to actually wash it and then reload it again. So I've washed it and reloaded it, and I probably want some bits of, 
Let's see if we can get some highlights tinkering inside of here somewhere just to break up. Now where your waterline is, you want to keep that very dark. So you're adding depth within your landmass there and this can just sort of taper down in a roundabout way. So I'm just making the shapes of these trees, whatever they are, whether they're mangroves or um, I don't know, whatever they are. Now what you do with the, the reflection bits, I love doing this, you grab your, your, your brush and you sort of scratch them in just like that. On, make sure you've got no blobs there though. And just sort of scratch in bits of reflection. Where you've got the dark pockets, try and keep them within your reflection as well. Okay. And we'll go like that. And it makes the reflection look watery. And just remember, if you're a beginner, don't think you can't do it, because you can do it. It's just practice. Everything takes practice. Okay, I'll finish this all the way along like that. Okay, I've given that a dry. Now the next thing you want to do, just to finish the water off, I've got a flat brush, and I've got some glazing medium. It's just a glaze, which is here. Now what you want to do is just grab a little bit of white in your brush. Okay, not too much, because it's very powerful. And then just start mixing some of that white. Now see how I've pulled it away, you can sort of see through that and you can't hear. You want this a lot more see through because it, it does dry see through but if you just got it too strong it doesn't quite work. And I'm using this to make the surface of the water. And when you're putting this on any painting in my opinion and my experience, you want to try and get it on and that's it. If you keep playing with it, it'll grind right in and eat your paint underneath. So you be very careful and mindful of that, okay? And you know what? I just told you that for nothing. All right, so now we're gonna use this flat brush and you can start off with a bullshit stick if you want. Get over your horizon line and we'll get at least the water hitting the edge of the bank there. Where are we? Coming across, nice, straight. Look at that straight line. It's coming down lower in the water a bit. Break it up a bit. Wipe some of it off. <sighs> Get here. I want to fix that big blob up there. There we go. And this is going to simply make, where's a little bit more? Um, we'll sink the um, reflections down. Nice and straight. I always get nervous when I do these. I don't know why, I'm just human. Sink your reflections down like that, okay? Because the things we're putting in front of the water, we don't want to have to paint these behind them. That's why I'm doing it now. And we will put, I don't know, some bit of wind, something there. Soften that up a bit. Oh, don't get any little bits falling down like that if you can. Just makes water look wrong. Okay. And the wind hitting the water is pretty much like scallops like this. You can come out from your reflection there where that sun was. Or get them a bit more nature looking. Just practice these and come from your reflection now these will lighten up and sink into the painting and make it look more bullshittingly good. There we go. And you can see what we've done to the water. You can sort of experiment with this, getting pockets of wind, making little ripples within your water here and there. It's fun. And once you know what to add into a painting, it's even more fun. Now grab yourself a detailed brush, uh, a mouse stick if you got one, and uh, we'll put some little birdies in the sky before we just finish the bottom. So probably coming from the middle here. Now I've got to just condition it on my brush so there's no blobs. And we'll pretty much put some birds coming from the center. Now you can even practice silhouettes of birds like this. Some little
silhouettes of birds. We've got a bit of a blob on that one. I probably should be using a um, more pointier brush. And <laughs> looking like birds instead of blobs. Now we'll get some all the way over. They're pretty much the same size because they're all in the same spot. Look at this one here, he looks like he got hit by a weed eater. And we'll put a nice one up here, the big king of the group. He's saying, come on fellas, come over here with me. I know where I'm going. <laughs> Bit of a weird bird. We can probably put some tiny ones in the background if you want, just to give it some kind of you know, that'll do, don't overdo it, eh? I might want a bit more here, another one about here somewhere. Okay, and then we want to do the subject matter. In the water here, I want a, a nice dry stump, something about here just sitting in the water. So let's say about here. So we'll get, load my brush up and we'll pretty much, I wanna make the shape of it first. So about there like that, that's the shape I want. Okay, shapes there, flatten the bottom of it off, flatten the bottom, okay. Now just make your shape the way you want. Get it going fatter to skinnier. See, to me, the bottom of that is not quite level. So I wanna get that a bit level. Okay, then we're going to make this an old stumpy, I'll use that smaller one again, just to get it really broken up, some skinny stuff up there. and turn it into an old busted up dead tired looking stump in the water okay now we'll just go from the water and we'll scratch so scratch where it's joining into the water solidly scratch it and then just start scratching it down making all these scratches up and down in an up and down motion we'll get something out there a little bit and then we're going to get something to make that around here somewhere just like that because it's sort of clear and it's sort of not and there we go grab a little bit of the glaze that you mixed up with the white and where this is in the water where are we uh, come across right across out there sink it down now make sure you dry it because you don't want this to go gray I think I made it gray and we're going to sink some of those reflections in the water as well just like that okay I've got some burnt sienna and black I'll get some of this going just to get a nice dark a bit darker now this burnt sienna and the black, I want three values of it, light, medium and dark. Okay, this will be the darker value. And I want a big boulder or a rock right here. Now when a boulder is close to you, you don't have the bottom of it flat. That's indicating that it's way out there in the distance, but when it's closer to you, you can start seeing the top of it and the roundness where it's meeting the water. And I'll show you what I mean. So we'll do a, a nice, I'll just, that's where it's in the water. but. The water's here. This is where the water is. There like that. It's not flat because it's close to us, okay? So that's something you've got to know. Now, we'll get this. I want that top edge sharp, but it can be scraggly looking. It's a big boulder rock type of thing in, the, in this swamp or the lake here. Get a bit more water in the mix. Now, I want to come down to where it's in the water, right there, down, okay. Now I'll just block it in. 
Okay, I've blocked that in. Now I'll quickly get some of its reflection in the water as well. Now see how I've given it a round bottom, not a flat bottom. Now we'll get this. This is the reflection of it here. Get this kind of scattered in the water there and then block that in. I want to come over here a little bit more. There we go. Don't dig too much with your brush, otherwise you'll dig your white paint underneath where you put that white craft paint. Okay, and this can be dried and we can add the other little flavours to it, something simple. Okay, same colour, we're coming brighter now. So we've got this bit of black in there. And I'll just start adding some white into it. So we've got a tinted value of that. There we go. Now where the rock's hitting the water, you want to keep that area dark. So if anything, I want to, I mean, water's going to be about here. So I want to keep that dark and I want to get some of this just on the very top sort of thing and just kind of let it scratch and make a round rock boulder shape. That's what I'm going for. Just like that. And it's coming around. See, I'm trying to make the shape with the strokes. There we go. Like that come back over this way just like that oh scratch him in there and you can always come back with the darker color to fix it up if you think you've done too much bodging around get that in a reflection there and now I'm just going to highlight some more of this with some white a little bit more not too much so you don't want to mute it there we go that'll do and just find you tear off bits and come down there. And if you whisper, sometimes it's working really great for you. Probably put a little bit in the reflection as well. A little bit of mumble jumble in there. Now I'm going to grab some of the darker colour and add the darks. Watch what the darks do to that. Now, I've just got some black. I want to get bits of dark within the rock. Get it very scratchy. I'll get it off there. And where the rock's in the water, that's where I want to kind of keep it dark. Coming from there. Get some of it going up there. And it's just a matter of going backwards and forwards with your lights and darks until you're happy. Sometimes you look at paintings and you see a nice painting, but there's something just not quite right with it. And nine times out of ten, once you know it, you'll always see it, is people are forgetting to put shadows and dark values within their objects and grass and trees and whatnot. Now we'll just finish off this painting because I want some little reeds here, somewhere about here. So bits of grass or something in the water there. Okay, something there, probably something here. This is very inky, it's just the dark colour there. And now what you've got to do is try and replicate those reflections in the water. Something like that. And we'll put a bit of a, a stick with this as well. Something like a dead wood or something laying in the water there. Can you see that? Yeah, we got something there. And what I like to do with my rocks, some of you know it, some of you might not. Uh, I like to get the little script liner like this and just start from a dark bit and then make my own little 
deep crevices like like you're doing limbs on a tree or a lightning or something it's just something I like to add within there try to find me dark bits and put them in there that'll do now just to finish it where we'll sink some of these reflections down here with that glaze that we had mixed up okay just to sink them down this is just more appealing than big ugly knife marks of white paint and um, the water is about here so we want to kind of bring that around our rock so you can sort of see which parts underwater get that right across there sink it down there we go Okay, let's put an autograph on here and whack a frame on it. And I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. Thank you very much, much appreciated. And this painting and a lot of others that I do are for sale. Check out the links in the description below. You can see what's available for purchase there. And if they're already sold, you can always buy a beautiful quality print. Become a member of my art group. Links are below for that as well. Everything's below, all the links. Check them out and see what's there. Okay, let's whack a frame on this. There we go. Where, where's my ledge? There we go. That's not too shabby, is it? We've got a beautiful dawn setting. Or, well, it's not quite dawn because the sun's up there, actually. But yeah, we've got a beautiful lake scene, swamp scene with some reflections. And just remember, you can do that. Also, I want to thank Kyle Cut Media who supplied the picture reference for this tutorial today. Thank you very much. And like I said, check out my links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing, you be sure to tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.